our guest, Dr. Steve Wallace. nouns, you need a lot of prepositions of, on, by, through, in. The reader forgets what is on, what is by, what is through, what, and you quickly lose him. When you use verbs, this problem disappears. What's the subject? Two very. Rather, one very. Quite half very. Extremely, three very. So we don't say very, very, very important. We say extremely significant, right? We use the most precise word we can. Whole. Whole world, whole problem. It could be non-physical or physical. If you're talking about something real or physical, say complete or entire. But for knowledge or information, say comprehensive. Make clear. You can make the window clear, or you can make your meaning clear. If you're talking about your meaning, say, clarify, elucidate. Let me move on to a new error. Verb tense change in a sentence. Here's a frustrated reviewer. He says, your discussion section changes verb tense often. Sometimes you change several times within a sentence. It makes it difficult to understand what has been done and what you are still planning to do. Yes. Let's talk about tenses for a moment. We use the past tense in our research for everything that occurred in our paper or others' papers. My methods, past tense. If I use the present tense, everything's happening right now. If I use the future tense, I look like I did nothing, and the whole thing is a proposal. So the simple past tense for our methods and our results. When do we use the present tense? We use the present tense to indicate a fact, something always true. Now, this makes the present tense a little bit dangerous, because whenever you use the future tense in your research writing, you're saying it's true now until the end of the world. If that's not true, you should use the past tense. More conservative, more careful. For example, your results. Your results should be in the past tense. You saw them one time, but that doesn't mean it's a fact forever. Hopefully, other scholars will confirm your findings and will use the present tense to talk about you. But for right now, you will use past tense for your results. Let's take a look at some sentences. All studies described as using the X procedure are included in the analysis. Are included? Are you doing it right now? No, they were included. X will be synthesized using the same method that was detailed for Y, using CO2. Will be synthesized? No, was synthesized. Your methods are passed now, finished. Concentrations of these compounds show no dependence on temperature and remained at a stable level. What's the problem here? Show. The showing is also over. They showed no dependence. Quick review. Which tense should you use? Past tense for what you saw in your methods and your own results. Present tense for facts. Future tense almost never. It's not a common tense in academic writing. Honestly, you could write your whole paper and never use the future tense. It's that uncommon. Maybe for future work in the end of your discussion, but even then, not very commonly. Another error, omitting comparisons. In mathematics, we have a rule that you can only compare the similar things. You can only compare apple to apple or orange to orange. You cannot compare an apple to an orange because they are uh, buoy young, right? They're not the same. English has the same rule. In English, you can only compare a noun to a noun or a verb to a verb. You cannot compare a verb, action, to a noun, non-action. And yet, we do this all the time. 
Here is a reviewer complaining about it. He says, line 20 of page 2 should read, the finance department focuses on profits more than the accounting department does. Let me look at that original sentence with you and talk about why it's wrong. Here it is. The finance department focuses on profits more than the accounting department. This looks accurate, but it's not. I have more than, so clearly I'm comparing two things. But what am I comparing? Verb, focusing on profits, to noun, accounting department. Can we do that? Can we compare a verb to a noun? No. How can we fix it? The finance department focuses on profits more than the accounting department does. Does what? Does focus on profits. Now we've got an equal comparison. Country A funds high-tech innovation more than country B. I'm comparing funding to country. Can I do that? No. Country A funds high-tech innovation more than country B does. Does what? Does fund high-tech innovation. Here's another one. The leachate fingerprint from the river was compared to the landfill. Now, what does my student want to do? My student wants to compare the fingerprint from the river to the fingerprint from the landfill. But is he doing that? No. He's comparing fingerprint to landfill, not fingerprint to fingerprint. Easy to do. Easy to forget what we are comparing. How can we fix it? The leachate fingerprint from the river was compared with that. That what? That fingerprint from the landfill. Now we have an equal comparison. Now we are talking about apples and apples, oranges and oranges, the same thing. The device formulated in this experiment has higher luminance. Now here's another common problem for comparison. I see the word higher, but I don't know what is higher than. I don't see higher than anything else. Whenever you use a comparative word like higher or greater or more, must always be greater than, more than something else. The device formulated in this experiment has higher luminance than conventional models. Okay, now we are, have a complete, full comparison. Reactions with this chemical were faster. Can we put faster by itself? No. Were faster than those. Those what? Those reactions. Now I'm comparing the same thing with this. My last writing error. Subject and verb agreement. It's an easy one to forget. Let's take a look. The recent innovations in imaging techniques, MRI in particular, has facilitated the diagnosis. Now, what's the problem here? It should be have, right? Have facilitated. It's easy to think that we are modifying MRI, but no, we are modifying the innovations. And sometimes we forget when we have words separating our subject and our verb, which verb we're modifying. Innovations have facilitated. Or this one. The ratio of positive cells per thousand were defined as the positivity index. No, the ratio was defined. Again, singular ver ver verb, singular noun, plural verb, plural noun. I'm going to share with you, let me, let's review our top nine errors together. Do we prefer active or passive voice in our sentences? Active because that's the convention across domains. Two, do we prefer nouns or verbs? Verbs, they're alive, they show life. Nouns are dead, and they take more words. Do we like starting sentences with it? No. We want to start with our subject must, subject may. Do we like strong verbs or weak verbs? Strong verbs. Can we compare a noun to a verb? No. Noun, noun, verb, verb, just like mathematics, same is true in English. Verb tense, past tense for what you did. Present tense for facts. Future tense, almost never. Verb agreement, singular noun, singular verb, plural noun, plural verb. Redundancy, dead wood, kills your paper. 
Your sentence becomes so long, people don't see the value. Instead, cut out that dead wood to make your sentence clearer and shorter. Finally, pronouns. You may know what it is and who they are. Your reader may not know. Be suspicious of your pronouns. Question them. Cut them where you can. Your paper will be easier to understand. I have one final error. It's not related to English, but it is related to publishing. I want to share it with you. When we write our journal paper, we send it to a journal. And we hope that the reviewers of the journal will like our paper and accept us. These reviewers are selected by the editor. And where do they come from? They usually come from the references and citations in your own paper. Your editor's very busy. He doesn't have time to read your whole paper, so he usually uses your paper to find your reviewers. Now, here's my problem. Sometimes I read my students' papers, and in their introduction, they say, Smith's model was stupid, and Johnson was an idiot, but my wonderful model will change the world, or something like that. What's the problem with this? Well, the problem is that Smith could be reviewer one and Johnson reviewer two, and since you just criticized him, he has a very good reason to look for your English errors. Don't give him this motivation. Be nice to your reviewers, your references, because they will be your reviewers. Also, when you are in research, you are in a very small pool, very small domain. There are less than 100 reviewers in every domain. If you make three of them hate you, and each of them tells 10 of their friends, now 30% of your reviewers don't like you. And reviewers don't die very often. They live a long time. They could reject you many times before they retire. So be careful the way you talk about your reviewers. Let me talk to you about some potentially offensive citation. The key problem with Smith's explanation is that it seems that Smith's understanding of the X framework is questionable. It means Smith is a little bit stupid. Smith may not like this, even if it's true, and he may look for other reasons for rejecting you, like English. So, be polite, be nice. Now, obviously, when you're writing your research, you must show a difference between your work and others' work, but how can you do this politely? Here's a suggestion. Say, Smith's model was effective in the X problem, however in Y. Here I'm saying not that I'm right, he's wrong, but rather that we have different problems. Or, the X benefit of Smith's approach are not applicable to Y. Here I'm saying that uh, he had a benefit, but I couldn't apply it. Now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not saying to do bad research and write poorly and make friends. What I'm saying is, your research is critically important. Yes, writing, definitely important. But there's a third aspect you may want to consider, your peer reviewers. Don't make them hate you. They will have additional reason to recommend rejection of your hard work. Well, that's all I have for you today. I want to refer you to my website. About 10 years ago, I started an editing company in Taiwan. We used to get uh, one paper every day. Now we get 32 papers every day from academics. We focus on research. I have 29 full-time editors in my office in Taipei, and we just started an office here in Hong Kong. If you ever need editing or revision of your work for a scholarly publication, please take a look at our work. We only edit in academic papers uh, in specific domains like social science, chemistry. We have specialty editors for each of those areas. I also have a blog. Every week I post new posts about ways to write and publish papers, how to write the introduction, abstract, methods, results. You can take a look at our conversation. We've had it going on there for quite some time, and you may enjoy reading what we've already posted. If you'd like my PowerPoint, again, just write down your email address on that little piece of paper, put it on the back table. I won't be able to send it this week, but next week when I get back to my office, I'm happy to email uh, that to uh, all of you. Any questions about our time today? Yo, one team, ah? Well, 
if that's all, good luck with your research and bye-bye.